I'm Esper, and I'm here to bring you the highlights from the qualifying rounds. So let's look back on those 16 racers and what it took for them to be competing here today. They went down to Orson and took on the BTR course, which is relatively new. And it is the first time it's being featured inside of the System 7. Not only for the qualifiers, but also for race 5, where we'll have the racers come back here in a heat of 4 which is going to be pretty tight for that many racers. Just ask Isotope from Venture Origins as they were on fire for two entire laps before crashing to their demise, but not before clinching a spot in the top 16 with a lap of a minute and 20 seconds, placing them 12th overall. Herbie, auto qualifying for being last year's System 7 champion, picks up where he left off with a lap of 115.8 to show everyone why he is still the racer to beat. A few came close though, Chuby505 showing Steady can beat out speed in some places to get that time down. Star Prime Racing flying high over those jumps, and Circle Worm from Catcom Alpha showing smooth turns through those chicanes, all qualified with a 116. Sanji Sama took off with a bang, but that early explosion also gave them an early exit from the competition. It wasn't till J Script from Lice Motorsports looking smooth through every sector with their lines, took number one with a 115.4, really putting on some pressure for that cutoff time as more and more racers were now being denied their qualifying spot. But it was the finesse driving of Atmosi from SPG Racing that clinched the cutoff time of a minute and 22.8. Now those top 16 teams are here to race in today's events. And if the qualifiers are any indication, then it looks like the top three winners from last year's System 7 are going to have some healthy competition coming for them this year. We'll see if that holds true in today's events. Now, let's take a look at those top 16 racers that are going to be competing in this year's System 7. Five, four, one, yours. Oh, sorry, I was just jamming to some absolutely fantastic music we had going there. Oh, seven star <laughs> citizens. And welcome to the first and second race of the System 7 2954 presented by Equinox. I am Cruncy. This is Maya, and we will be your uh, shout, shout. I don't really think it's shout casting in Star Citizen as much as it is like comlink producing. We'll be your com, your, your com shouters. Yes. Tom <laughs> we'll be your okay. guys in the Love booth. It. How you doing, man? <laughs> Not too bad. What about uh, yourself, you my been? friend? I've been okay. Yeah, been okay. I've been all right. I, I told you a little bit earlier, I messed up my back this week. And so I am desperately waiting to get off camera so I can sit down again. But we'll wait until we get to that later on. Um, we've got a hell of a day for you guys today. This is the first time we're doing two races on the one day in S7. This is, this is a bit unprecedented for us, but because we've got the two races in a similar place, they're both on Microtech today, and because they're a little bit of our faster races, we can get through them a lot quicker. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, that little qualifier video that you saw there, two weeks ago, we had our qualifiers for the System 7 so we could find out who our top 16 teams in, in Star Citizen were going to be, and it was absolutely insane. We've never had so many close times in a qualifiers before we we've, we've gotten pretty good but it's just every year more and more and more competitive dude it was insane super, super impressive yeah yeah i mean like uh, that entire weekend was uh, was very interesting because again like if you were new to the racing scene you wouldn't expect a thing like the ptv to like pack such a like a high octane scene but like uh with the times the competition the level of competition but also like the camera angles it made a really really cool mm -hmm. thing to see yeah, it's definitely given us a nice little taste of what we're going to see this year with that extra bit of competitiveness. True. But before we get to what we're going to be seeing today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what you're going to be seeing in a couple months' time, which is our AVS charity event. This is sort of a spawn of our fight or flight events that we ran uh, the last couple of years, but we're doing it for the kids. So this one has had a date change. So if you were following along a couple of weeks ago, um, this has now been changed to June 8th because we are expecting 323 to come out soon. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, there's quite a few changes coming to uh, fighting in uh, 323. So, you know, give people a little bit of an opportunity to uh, to get better at, uh, you know, better at their dog fighting in new style. Um, 
yeah. yeah, should be a really, really good time. Drew, just in time for master modes and stuff to change everything as well. So it's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, looking forward to um, like uh, to seeing exactly like how it changes the competitive scene altogether, man. Like, uh, but yeah, this is for yep. the Sick Kids Children's Hospital in Canada as well. Uh, this is Avenger Squadron and uh, Ammo Esports teaming together to uh, put together a really cool event for the kids. Yeah, hopefully as well with 323, we'll have those private lobbies. We're supposed to, so even better. Next yeah. up, we have something where you guys are going to get to see a couple of people in real life, which is Beacon. Just want to talk to you guys a little bit about Beacon. Beacon is coming up very soon. Maya, I believe you're going, correct? That's right. Yeah, I'll be at Beacon. Um, so this is the uh, the Belgian Star Citizen, I guess the European SC like uh, convention for all the fans and stuff. It's uh, every year. It's a bigger competition, a bigger um, not competition, although competitions will happen within it. But a, a, the biggest uh, convention in the EU for SC uh, like citizens one and all i believe devs fly in i'll be going as well um i think maybe even uh crucian's going as well but uh but yeah i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be my first time there yeah lots of people big meet up for atmo and a big meet up for the community i think out if i'm not wrong i think outside citizen con it actually is the biggest star citizen meetup every year so really really cool to always see a bunch of images and videos come out from that and seeing everyone meet up so if you're going make sure to uh go uh annoy maya for some photos now that's enough talking about some stuff that's coming up soon let's talk about what's happening today like i said we've got two races for you guys today we've got a traditional race and we've also got a heat based race we're going to talk about first the one that we're going to be starting off with which is the new river canyon chaos we ran this one last year as well we're going to be on a hover quad here we're going to be doing five laps around this truly death machine of a track <laughs> that really does separate a lot of our a lot of our competitors. Um, now, Maya, I, I don't believe you were yeah. here for this one last year, but let me paint you a bit of a picture. Okay. We start off pretty smooth, as you can see right there. You've got the start finish line at the top right corner. It's a nice straightaway. You've got like some hills to worry about. You've got a few trees to worry about, but it's mostly flat. The right. real skill for this track comes into right at the back left there. Uh, where you've got to jump into the river. Now, these are the awesome rivers that came into the game uh, about 18 months ago now, I believe. Yeah, where a while you've got now. These really, really high cliffs. You know, you fall into the water. It's hard. It's a really, really hard track, but it's one of my favorites. It was really, really enjoyable to watch last year. I'm hoping we get some sunshine on this year's race because, uh, yeah, it'll be a good one. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what the forecast is going to be for Microtech when we do get there. But yeah, it's really cool how like uh, we're able to incorporate these things and just CIG in general, just adding features like this with the river. I mean, like uh, in that image there, it's a bit small, but you can see like we're actually coming in from the river's source and then going down into that valley and through into uh, what looks like a very uh, precarious looking racetrack. I believe there is a version uh, of this that is in Arena Commander at the moment as well um in the new yep. gravlev racing uh like uh, mode there but to be yeah, i'm looking forward to seeing it so you're saying that like uh, we might see some kabooms like around that uh that turn around there on the <laughs> western side yes all right yeah it's um you you, you got to imagine you're going to be essentially falling down it, it it's probably about 100 meters and if you don't fall down in the correct way you're going to end up in the water and you're going to have a kaboom so yeah, you've got I mean, to be super, super careful there it is. You've also got to, you got to pray to the stars and gods a little bit for that one to, <laughs> to hope you get the, the best outcome. But once yeah. you do land into the river, it's quite enjoyable. It's it's one of those races where you don't want to go too fast, but you like that sort of maneuverability that you get. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a nice little change. It brings everyone back down together. Also, because everyone ends up slowing around that corner everyone gets yeah. pulled together you know like like no matter I mean, how far away you are so yeah with five laps uh to see i mean like we have five chances for some explosions down on that side but i'm sure like uh it does get more precarious as you go through and uh yeah i mean like even that straight away alone you're using gravlev but at the same time uh gravlev we, we talked about skill expression and like uh, that skill uh floor for these vehicles even the ptv can require a lot of time to master with Gravlev, obviously, yep. you can choose exactly how high off the ground your bike is. The lower you are, the faster you go. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge risk to take 
uh, but uh, especially like over these little hillocks and stuff. So it'll be very interesting to see who has this track sorted out. But yeah, that, that's part of yeah. it, I guess, you know, like uh, the danger. <laughs> uh, also, just a confirmation there, we will not be using the hover quad today. We've been changing that one to the dragonfly, uh, which in my opinion, right. great choice, especially because a lot of the, uh, like the, the dragonfly has something that a lot of the other uh, grav levs don't have, which we've got a speed chart, which we'll get to a little bit later. But mm. even though it's a little bit slower than the Nox, it has a fake health pool, as I like to call it. You have uh. an extra amount of chances of ramming into walls and stuff with the Dragonfly before you actually explode, uh, which I see. Is, a, is a little nicer. It means your runs get a little bit more consistent. So like all the critical HP right now, of course, before Maelstrom, before like actual systemic damage is in the, uh, well, in the in the dragonfly in the core whereas in this yes. bike it's like on on the struts as well that's kind of crazy but uh, i guess yeah. you get what you get you know that's why drake yeah. is the best <laughs> <laughs> moving on after we watch that one guys we're going to be heading over to cold snap race number two this one we're actually going to be using the nox today so not the origin x1 velocity uh but as uh, i'll talk about in a little bit the nox is so much fun so this one is over near microtech uh near uh, new babbage um and it is essentially a flat race with just a bunch of hills as the uh, sort of obstacles this is going to be our first heat race today so of uh, for the system seven so we're going to be doing these in heats of four you're going to be doing five laps if you come first or second you advance on to either the uh like runner-up finals or the finals so multiple races that these players are gonna have to do today it's gonna be a long day of racing for these guys oh yeah uh, the i the irony isn't lost on me though i mean like we have heated our first heated race in one of the coldest moons in the entire game um but uh but yeah it's gonna be a fun one regardless and i do like the fact that this track has uh like uh, all these little nifty names and stuff for all like the major turns hypothermia black ice straight ice grip <laughs> frostbite pass sandman's return who's sandman and why is he coming back <laughs> i don't know but i'm scared uh but that's a good one i like when we start doing that it, it sort of personalizes yeah. a lot of the turns a lot and when we get oh, it really these does races, that we do over and over and over again every year which i have a feeling this might be a race that'll return well, today's gonna be our first big look at it but uh, it's certainly going to be a fun one because Maya, have you done any of the racing in uh, Arena Commander? It just came back. The Revlev races okay. just came back about a week ago. The Nox is so much fun, <laughs> so much fun, <laughs> and very fast. I've seen some creators go at it. I haven't done it myself this time around. Um, like a. Uh, I tried before with my keyboard and mouse, but I was like, you know what? Everybody else is using Hosas for this. I'm going to wait. But now I'm set up. I haven't gone back <laughs> yet because uh, honestly, I'm terrified of the competition. <laughs> but <laughs> Look, the it's, second it's I go fine, on that, I... listen, listen, the first time I go on to that track, I'm going on the leaderboard. I'm going to be visible. So I'm going to have to be offline yeah. and practice. I have to, I have to train before I go <laughs> online, man. But uh, it looks so much You need to get so your first fun. time top 10. That's right. Otherwise, are you even trying? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, those are the two races you guys are going to see today. Before we talk a little bit more, what are the players actually competing for over the course of the System 7? If you're not familiar, the way that this tournament works is we're going to be here essentially every two weeks. These races are going to be here every two weeks, and they're going to be competing for points uh, to get some prizes at the end of the series. And we have those prizes right these are going to be what our players are competing for this year. Now, there is some merch there. It is going to be the new merch, which I can't show you guys yet. I'm very, very disappointed. I can't show you guys the merch yet, but it's coming soon. It's looking really cool. Trust me. Trust me. So in that first place prize, obviously, everyone will be getting a trophy. We've got a team member champion jacket for one member of the team. And then we've got some Rover Lynxes and Crusader Hercules C2s so that you can move all your racing ground vehicles around for the next couple of years. Uh, Myra, I'll let you talk about second and third. All right. Interesting. Uh, one team member jacket or one per team member. Actually. Never mind. Everybody gets one. For a second, I thought that like all four had to compete to see who gets the jacket. <laughs> but yeah, in second place. <laughs> we we'll make them race again. That's right. In second place, everybody gets a jersey. Obviously not the one you see there. That's the one that Kronzi and I are wearing from last year's Road to Citizen Con. 
Uh, they also get themselves the Origin X1 Velocity and also a 400 i to cart it about in third place. We'll be getting themselves their own jerseys as well as a uh, CNOU Hover Quad and Nomad to boot as well. So we have uh, three forms of carrier, one for your uh, for all your needs, and then. Oh, honestly, the Nomad has such a close, like a such a warm place in my heart. It's my favorite vehicle. I just wish it was good. <laughs> the Nomad, really? Yes. Look at it. Okay, sure. The toilet door yeah, doesn't open cool, up. It's cool, but favorite uh, yeah. vehicle. That's that's a yeah. strong, strong opinion. CNOU is very interesting to me. I love how the the, inter the the interior of the ship is and stuff. The only thing, the only thing I'm not a fan of of the Nomad is the fact that when you sit on the toilet, the door doesn't close. It's a very bachelor kind of move, you know. It's a very <laughs> power move, and it faces the door. So any guests, anybody who has like your co your code, <laughs> gets in your ship, they'll see you just there, trow dropped, and you know, ready to anyway. So those are the prizes, <laughs> and of course, <laughs> the winning team also Sorry, will be getting themselves uh, these trophies as well, which we actually saw yep. firsthand at CitizenCon too. Yeah, they are very very pretty trophies. Big fan of them. So hopefully, you guys can be the ones that uh, take those away. Now, as our competitors are getting ready, one more thing we're gonna show you guys is the vehicle speeds. Now, these are obviously going to apply a lot over the course of the entirety of the event, but today, the big important ones are gonna be the Dragonfly and the Nox. And Gravelevs have had a massive, massive change over the course of the last uh, few years. Um, unfortunately, we don't seem to have the Nox or the, uh, the Dragonfly here but i can tell you that the nox and the x1 velocity are very similar into their speeds the nox is a little bit faster uh the dragonfly is a lot slower than most of the grabs but like i said it has that additional added bonus of just being able to withstand a lot of collisions it, it doesn't that's really right sorry i disappoint dis right. I, I oh, dis okay for a sec i thought it was me for a second <laughs> Yeah, you're right about the Dragonfly. I mean, like, it has that durability, right? So, like, for race one, uh, at the very least, there'll be a little bit of mercy and some journey mercies going through, like, you know, the five laps. Whereas with the, with mm -hmm. the Hover Quad, uh, you probably, uh, we probably see more Kabooms than we need to see. Although I'd yes. love to see... Man, I'll hold that one myself, you know. I don't want to see everybody blow up. I want to see quite a few blow up. <laughs> you know, at least the quarter. Some explosions. <laughs> some at explosions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be how many people are going to be left alive, unfortunately. Um, the the one thing I also want to mention is uh, race number one with the, uh, uh, with the Dragonfly on the terrain that is the River Canyon Chaos. You're going to see how people do a lot more of your height strafing. If you don't know out there, the way that you determine your speed with the gravel levs is your strafe up and down, depending on how high you are. The, the higher are, the slower your max speed, and the essentially the worse your maneuverability as, as a result as well. In River Canyon Chaos, there's going to be a lot of moving up and down. When we do get uh, later on in the day to Cold Snap with the Nox, it is going to be very unlikely that there's anyone not completely at the bottom, bottom All right. heights, because it's... It's a flat lake, so you don't have to worry about any of that. The only sort of terrain you do have to worry about are the things to your sides, right? Are the, are the little hills and whatnot to your sides. So that's that's mostly what we'll be expecting. Now, mm -hmm. with all that being said, I think we do have some visuals of our races rocking up now, getting ready for race number one. A reminder, it's going to be River Canyon Chaos. And there we go. Look, that was a perfect timing, apparently, of everyone coming out of Hercules. <laughs> Oh man, there's just something about this game. I'll keep saying it until I go blue in the face, but like every single shot we see from our camera crew just makes this game look so cinematic. This is something out of a movie right now as these guys uh, egress from the C2 Hercules out here into the uh, the dead of night to get ready and line up for this uh, race here, Kronzi. Yeah. One thing I do want to mention as well, like imagine we do this race again next year or something mm -hmm. very similar to it. Well, in 323, we're supposed to be getting those cool new water physics that we saw at uh, CitizenCon last year. So then That's we'll actually right. get to see the dragonflies go over the river and like pushing all the water out of the way. So you just yeah, talked about so cinematic. It's about to get better. It's about to get cinematic. -er. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that with the water displacement. Uh, there's so much coming in for 323. But like, um, speaking of 323, is that already a kaboom over there? What's that over there? Anyway, 
Um, speaking of three, two, three, <laughs> what are you looking forward to the most? Oh, Maya, Maya, Maya. Mm -hmm. Well, now that um, now that even I gave you the Patch question, notes, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, now that even Connie Patch notes are public, and we get to see a little bit of that stuff a little bit earlier, not as in hear from people about stuff a little bit earlier. I am very excited from what I'm hearing of all the creatures. They talked a lot about. Uh, They've been talking a lot about creatures and like creature AI over the course of the last couple of months. And obviously they showed mm -hmm. us a little bit of stuff at CitizenCon. And then to reveal essentially this week that we're getting some burbs. We're getting some, some, some little scary doggies. Uh, I, th I think we may be getting something else. I'm not sure. But the fact that we're getting these is going to be so, so much fun. I just hope we get a mission with them. That's that's what I really Um, want. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh... I'm I'm sure CIG has something cooking for all that stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing it, man. I mean, like, uh, yeah, the, the the dog. What's it called? The copium or something? The copion, Koypon? The, co the copi? No, the the copers are us. We're the copers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to make that. There joke. we are. Uh, I believe, I believe it is. Yes, the copion is the is the dog, and the maroc is the bird. The Turbo Pelican, as I believe someone the on the uh, subreddit has <laughs> dubbed it, and I'm in love with it. It is the Turbo Pe Pelican. You can't change it. That's what it is. <laughs> I wonder if it drops Turbo Pelican gullets or something. It, it, we, it, I just need like a Final Fantasy. No, sorry. I just need like a World of Warcraft quest of like, go collect 10 Copion fangs or something. Oh, I do wonder how it's all going to be. I mean, like, when we got these uh, surface collectibles and stuff, being able to, like, you know, mm -hmm. loot things like the Degnus route and stuff, like, you could walk around the, a, a riverbank for four hours and not find a single one. I do wonder how creature <laughs> distribution is going to be like, though. I mean, I do hope there's going to be a lot more than things like uh, Degnus route and stuff. Yeah. Now, yeah. I do want to talk a little bit, guys, about who you are going to be seeing over the course of the next, well, essentially two months. Um, these, these are the people that actually qualified uh, last time we were here. So we have All Team right. Punch Nomi's, Team Blackhawks, and Team Amarox Fang. Anyone who's been uh, watching the S7 for a couple of years now will know these teams. They qualified last year as they were the top three teams to uh, to finish. They, they, they smashed it last year. In that's addition, right. you guys are going to be seeing Lease Motorsport or Lice Motorsport. Not 100% sure how that's pronounced. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to ask them. Uh, Premier Core Colonial, Star Prime Racing, Catcom Alpha, Garden Racing, which I'm very excited to see them rock up this year, Wild Cards Racing, Altera, Delta Dietus, Venture Origins, Argo Navis, AAWA Drunken Turtle Racing, Evaria SPG Racing. So, so a lot of these teams are return teams from the last couple of years, but we do still have quite a bit of fresh blood that I'm very excited to check out. Other than the first three teams, who are you most excited to watch over the course of the next two months, Maya? Well, I mean, we did see so many teams rock up at um, the qualifiers. And of course, we had Punch Nomi's Blackhawk and Amarok's Fang show us exactly why it is that uh, they got a buy into this competition. But I am looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing what Least Motorsports does, because I mean, like uh, when they came in there, they came to party with a 15-4-8. They beat Punch Nomi's, yes. you know, like uh, <laughs> our uh, our team to watch. Um, I think that they're going to be a very lethal team indeed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, as as for today, I'm not too sure who, what to expect. This is our first time watching these guys go Gravlev. But I am looking forward yep. to seeing how Punch Nomi's does for race two, considering that uh, Gerber the Gnome uh, is one of the races of SCR that helped to put that track together. So, I mean, like uh, there's a lot of yep. pressure on them. I believe they also have the fastest time on that track too, at least post it for time trials. So yeah. 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 It should be a very interesting one to watch. And I'm, I'm glad you did mention Gerber though, because Gerber is also one of our, uh, we, we, we've got a bunch of teams of groups of four this year, mm -hmm. a lot more than we have had previously as we changed the rules to qualifiers this year. Um, and I'm really excited to see just how much we get into the aspects of, you know, do you have a favorite, just is someone on your team, dedicated to gravlev someone dedicated right to, you know ptv racing that sort of thing uh and in, in that example in punch nomi's quelsar is actually going to be our racer for the uh, uh for the first race today as far as i can tell so uh, an amazing racer but uh someone that we only really barely got to see over the course of the last you know last couple of practice runs um mm. not 100 percent sure how they're going to go on gravlevs but if 
the uh, official uh, race times for the Arena Commander Grav Laves are anything to go. Grav races are anything to go by. Still not going to be someone that you want to compete against. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we actually have a list here of the favorite vehicles of each team. So not necessarily each uh, individual team member, but like, uh, mm -hmm. I suppose, maybe each team captain. Um, but I was just watching this and I, I didn't realize how many uh, new racing teams we have uh, for the System 7 yeah. this year. I mean, we have Argo Navis, Everia, Garden Racing, Lease Motorsport. Uh, Novak Racing, we have o over half of these contestant uh, teams here are new to the System 7. Um, it's going to be yeah, really new cool to, to the see System how 7, they fare. But not, not new to racing. I think there's been right. a really big sort of push towards people joining these kinds of racing events ever since uh, we got the Arena Commander Sport for racing. And then now that we've got specifically Gravelev Arena Commander Sport for racing, you know, it's just pushing people into this stuff more and more, which is awesome. Because I love yeah. watching people come into these more and more organized events, especially when they're a team uh, like, for example, Garden Racing, who have proven that they are really, really good at things like uh, the Damar Rally, but then bringing that down into a more concise, a more advanced uh, racing league, and then you know trying to put their stuff out is is great. So I'm hoping that they're sort of my team this year that I'm really hoping perform well in the S7 that we then see literally every single year. Um, I'm definitely not biased because because I love space tomato, <laughs> not at all. But <laughs> uh -huh. definitely yeah. not. No, of De course not. No, not. No. I've never once. <laughs> Who space? I've never heard of that guy. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, I'm loving watching all of these new teams. So welcome to all these new teams. Welcome to all new viewers of the System Seven. It's exciting. It's exciting. A hundred percent. Yeah. So we're almost uh, good to go. You can see all the racers there lined up. Only one Dragonfly Yellow Jacket. Only one racer out there showing just how much of an old head they are with the uh, with the original <laughs> concept skin of the uh, the Dragonfly there. I believe that makes you go faster, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you if yeah, you ha if you use skins, mm -hmm. it is guaranteed your Dragonfly goes faster. I think I see like is. a few pirate ones in there because the pirate one's like very very similar it's just got like a little bit right. of red on it looks like we're about yeah. two minutes away from the start of the race i'm 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 ready Maya. when it's there i'm watching i'm watching the discord thing for the countdown so don't worry i'll be ready to go nice yeah but, you're gonna be uh, the one calling it in yep for this one yes i'll, I'll give you i'll give you race number two and then I'll, mean, I'll do race number one and then the pressure we, we, we i mean i don't mind forth. you doing it again man i mean you know like uh the pressure <laughs> Maya, <laughs> do you not know how to count down from 10? <laughs> um, <laughs> don't out me like this, man. <laughs> the, the British educa education system is uh, real, real it's rough. Truly has failed <laughs> us today. <laughs> All right. But yeah, um, dude, I'm looking forward to this race. I'm looking forward to some explosions. It's nighttime as well. So we were kind of, you know, fingers crossed, hoping for the best here for the Series time of this system. thing. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not actually sure what time of day it is. Uh, we do have some enterprising citizens out there who have actually, um, you know, like, uh, made tools to be able to find out exactly, uh, what time of day it is. At least, like, uh, they've timed Ooh. how long each day is on every planet, and then they've, there, they've, uh, I'm there. Hello? Oh. There you are. Hello. Hello. Do Can you, you hear, hear me? I, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Okay. I hear you. That's good then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we Maya, good? Are Maya we safe? Having problems. Maya having audio problems for the first time in like seven years today. How dare specifically you? Specifically. How... <laughs> because that's, that's the way. It, look, if that's the worst thing that happens today, that's pretty good. All right. All right here we go, crossed. ladies and gentlemen. It's not jinx, thanks. <laughs> in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, go! And then we have the little awkward delay. As we wait for the <laughs> that was pretty fast. There that was go. almost, <laughs> yeah, that was on cue for me. You've got your uh, Australian latency there, but like that was a uh, bang on the money there for me. And there they are. But yeah, as I was saying before, maybe I was cut off there. But um, yeah, like it is in the dead of night. So 
the uh, there is an yep. added element of danger here for sure because you know maybe perhaps not every single racer has necessarily mapped out where every single tree rock and uh, well soon to be copion and a bird flock is gonna be but yeah look at this it's like a little constellation of fireflies just flying across the uh the, the terrain there it's eerie <laughs> That actually looks really darn cool. Uh, yeah. I am, I am a little surprised by that. Hopefully that's some desync that we're watching of the whoever's currently in last place there and they didn't get stuck in a tree. I've I've been stuck in many Microtech trees and um, unfortunately that is tends to be the, the sort of giveaway of what's going on there. So we're going to get some updates on where all of the positions of our races are throughout these. These are guys are going to be going through five laps for race number one. Um, and this, as we sort of showed you guys a little bit earlier in the racetrack, this entire first, really like almost half of the distance of the track is a straightaway, just over some very, very small hills, just a few small little bits of, uh, trees that you got to avoid as well there that we can see in the bottom right. But for the most part, this is the easy part. It's once you get into the river that it starts to get really rough. That's right. Uh, it does look as if our little timer up there is updating every now and then with uh, who is in first, who is in second. At the, at the very least, it's tracking that. We currently have Amarok's yep. Fang and SPG going neck and neck over there with Blackhawks uh, entering the fray as well. But uh, but yeah, it's just a really cool, chill straightaway. Uh, obviously, there are some uh, some uh, obstacles that to watch out for. There are trees in the way too. But, uh, but yeah, I'm yep. looking forward to seeing how they fare once they turn into that bend and go into the river. Yeah, it's really it's really the drop that'll get you. The The river <laughs> itself is obviously a lot more dangerous. I'm sure a lot of people here have tried to drive or fly sometimes <laughs> into rivers and uh, <laughs> can know just how deadly it can be. Even in the dragonfly, still going to be extremely deadly, but at least that has the bonus of in these sections surviving for quite a bit longer. Uh, but yeah, once you get onto the river, it's it's a lot safer. You really just comes into you know you just don't want to smash around into uh, into too many turns too quickly. If you have mm. participated in the Arena Commander Gravelev races and you've done, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what it's called there, but it's just, it is this race essentially. It is River Canyon Chaos. Uh, yes, you will notice. You will uh, if you go too fast, you're going to constantly send yourself into the wall. So don't do that in in an instance <laughs> like this where respawns aren't really a thing. True. I mean, like, that's kind of what separates Arena Commander from the uh, System 7 races. It's that, like, there are no takebacks, you know, like, the second you explode, like, <laughs> unfortunately, we saw Kuroda Team Racing, uh, you know, like, uh, hit that rail, and that was their attempt uh, done. Uh, like, the second you explode, mm -hmm. that is it. So, uh, yeah, it's all about consistency with the System 7. But uh, speaking of yeah. consistency, Kronzi, I mean, we have seen uh, what looks like a very interesting, uh, like a racer, like a separation going on here. We have, of course, mm -hmm. these are our three uh, racers in the uh, in in the rear of the pack. Actually, yeah. one just snagging a rock there as well. Um, as you mentioned, you know, like you can strafe up and down to increase and decrease your top speed, but like uh, there is definitely a uh, like a give and take there. If you go too low, you can snag those rocks and. Well, you saw exactly what happens when that happens. And so now, I mean, I would love to see yep. what's going on under the hood of that uh, dragonfly. And I think that's the bend here. It does appear to be. So it should be any moment now they're going to drop into the water. We're probably going to see some explosions, I would imagine, in a second as they come on through. There you can see that those cliff sides. You've got to drop in real, real oh, softly. Oh, look at that. Ooh, we're alive we're alive <laughs> that just scares me in my oh, real one life incident unfortunately not everyone Colonial. is alive yeah that's right yeah oh, we lose yeah we've yeah. had a couple of dnfs uh i saw a little bit earlier we also had some dnfs from garden racing as well which is a little bit unfortunate for first race of the day but it certainly happens when we are doing these much uh much more dangerous races is what they are that's really. right so, no, very very is, rough but is. we got two races today so it's it's you gotta you gotta try to keep you cool and get ready for the next one which should hopefully it, it'll be more competitive but like less dangerous you know what i mean so so still right. the same amount of stress level just for different reasons yeah i mean that's the beauty of the system seven is that it taxes different kinds of skill honestly i mean like uh, oh there's an explosion right there Ooh. With so somebody in third place just uh, got decimated. That was Whitehawk24 from SPG. Yeah. And uh, so that is, of course, uh, the lead pack again there. I think Blackhawks are still leading the way. 
But yeah, as I, as I was saying, you know, like when it comes down to it, there are two different kinds of skill level involved with these two first three races. Like this is uh, mm -hmm. equal parts endurance, but also being able to, you know, like, uh, how would you say? It, it's not so much learning a line like uh, the shorter tracks are for the yeah. heated race uh, coming soon. It's, it's more about uh, being able to adapt on the fly almost as well. Yeah, you can't you can't time trial your way through this track. You sort of mm. can in in the uh, rate in lap number in race number two, but you definitely can't do this today. It, it's it's just such a complex and unfortunately sometimes luck based race, and and you kind of kind of you, you have to minimize all of that variance as much as you can, and and sometimes that's not enough, you know. But yeah. We've still got some races on the track, and we've got Novak Racing, Elise Motorsports, and Amarox Fang in the top three at the moment. For Novak Racing, we have... Oh, no, no. Didn't we get a... Perhaps it hasn't been updated yet, because they just had their... Oh, no, that was Whitehawk. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, we have Comwar for Novak, uh, for Novak Racing. For Elise Motorsports, we have Captain Chaos QC. And for Blackhawks, we have Ludox3997 who proved that they were an amazing, amazing grab lev racer last year. That's right. And that is our three pack again. And uh, kudos again to the Atmo Esports camera crew for giving us these amazingly cinematic shots and risking uh, their misc, uh, or I suppose not their misc, but the uh, Mirai Furies through the uh, the canyon here. We have <laughs> Officer Rondog and Prince Enza Foxy uh, following uh, these, uh, these bikes through. And it looks like Ludox is going to be our first racer through with a uh, what was the time um i believe that was uh, 66 point there we go so just okay. sub of seven minutes so based on that you can sort of assume like give it give a couple extra minutes for for the last uh for the for the slower races there we're probably looking at about maybe a 50 minute race for uh race number one here hopefully that... we get to see everyone finish their laps today um or, or, or right. who is currently remaining uh because sometimes it'll it'll get a little bit slow i don't know if you remember maya the last time that i competed in this we had a, a river race it was the first time we had a river race and i oh no oh no <laughs> right on the lake right on the lake that is uh, that is right i thought the lake was going to be one of the safer things to see honestly <laughs> the, once you get onto the lake itself, yeah, but it, it uh -huh. is the act, the act of getting to the lake. Because what might happen, there's sort of like a, a weird leveling issue that happens between the river and the oh, lake. Oh, look right? at that so shot, dude. That is a great shot. That is fair. To, that, I can't believe Sevens hasn't exploded yet from that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of need like two screens, one to see where you're going, one to see where the camera's True. going. True. Um, yeah, you were talking yeah, about so when you the, move the, from uh, the, the river transition. to the lake. Oh yeah, no! Yeah. When you move from the river. Is that Blackhawk? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was it Amarok's was Fang. Big flex oh, no. from Amarok's Fang. Yeah, sorry, yes, Amarok's Fang. Yeah, yeah. Another one of our favored teams for this year. They're out of race number one. Okay, so yeah, Kronsi, you mentioned that you've uh, you've been a Gravlev racer. I mean, you are a Gravlev racer. You have actually raced on this track yourself. Um, like, yes. What would you do differently? We've seen five or six uh, <laughs> contestants explode so far. We have ten. Um, I left. would explode less. Would be my strategy. Uh, <laughs> no, it's as I said because you've just got to remove the variables of the explosion so much in a track like this. Mm -hmm. I would go I, like the second I turn into the river, I'm going like twenty meters a second. Right. I, I would just be going so so very slow, and then especially. Once again, when you approach the lake, it feels like it'll be safe. It's not. It truly is just not safe. And so you've got to, once again, go a lot slower, try to transition from the river to the lake uh, a lot smoother so that you don't end up bouncing under the water, which I do hope, and I, and I think it could be possible, that when we get the 323 water physics, some, that stuff may change. I'm, I I'm wonder if 323s... Yeah, I wonder if that's going to actually change how. I mean, like obviously, gravel vehicles they, they they don't float right. They they uh, they levitate over the water. So um, if you are going to be like you know making the water choppy and stuff, I don't think it's going to affect the bikes. But maybe it will. You know, like mm. maybe going in the wake of someone else's vehicle will make you faster or slower. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. E either way, it's definitely going to change a lot of the stuff here. 
AAWA Drunken Turtle Racing, also with a did not finish. Maya, we're in lap number two. This is only the second lap of five, Kronzi, and we've lost, let's see, yep. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven racers so far? We are, we're almost yes. halfway through our stock. Oh, <laughs> uh, make that, make that eight. Make that eight. Uh, oh, no! Uh, yeah. <laughs> you spoke too soon. <laughs> um, yeah, look, this was, this was oh, all- Oh, no! no! There it goes! <laughs> There's Captain Chaos from Least Motorsport, one of our faster racers, and wants to. Oh no, Kalasar! Kalasar from Punch Nubis! <laughs> My God, the humanity! <laughs> we so might want to start slowing say... down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said 50 minutes. Um, that yeah. was assuming we would have a race across the finish line. So <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens here today. Interestingly, Eva Rhea have not crossed the finish line yet. I do wonder if they are doing what I was mentioning before about just going so like, like so carefully slow that any of those river issues don't become a thing. The uh, high distances don't become an issue. That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's an yeah. endurance race, right? I mean, like, slow and steady wins the race. I mean, like, what does it matter if you just explode, you know? Yeah, but it is what it is. Oh, man. But if it's any consolation for for these racers, it does look as if uh, it might be morning or daytime. Uh, momentarily, it looks like. it's. Uh, it seems to be lightening up a tiny bit more. Oh, and just Eva as I Rhea! spoke about Eva Rhea! <laughs> Commentators, cars, Kronzi. <laughs> we have six teams still left on the track, and we're in lap number six two. Teams. Oh man, this is. Uh, I mean, kind of more than I was expecting, honestly. That's uh, yeah. Did, did I expect <laughs> this soon, Kronzi? I mean, I did ask for this, but you, you know, did. like, I didn't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a like this! This truly is a super, super rough track. So even the amount of uh, like effort and the amount of distances some of these races have gotten already is super, super impressive. I dare right. anyone watching at home to go and uh, take this track and give it a go and see if you can even get to the river section. It's it's super, super complex. Speaking of the river section, we're back on it now. We should be currently following Novak Racing, I believe, and they survived the entry. Nice one. That's Conwar from Novak Racing, who seems to be in first place and making short work of this uh, little meandering uh, chasm here. They seem to be pretty much on their own and uncontested. All they have to do is stay alive. Now, the question is, are they going to keep up the pace? Are they going to keep pushing through? Or are they going to uh, slow down now that they, you know, they can feel a bit more comfortable knowing that uh, no one's coming for them? Because yeah, what exactly. I've seen before, now yeah, go on. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what I've seen before, basically, is is that like uh, some of our faster racers, I mean, like Diplomat, for instance, who isn't racing with us uh, for the System 7 this mm -hmm. year, uh, like they once, I think, overlapped the entire group and still kept going. They didn't, they never slowed down and yep. they exploded, you know? Yep. Oh, there we yep. go. Oh, no. There we go. So we actually, we aren't, it looks like we're not following uh, number one at the moment. Blackhawks has gotten into their lap number three. They've made it around another and DNF exploded. this time for Argo Narvis. Uh, no, I think Blackhawks survived as, as far as I can tell. They're, they're, they're still up there. They're still all good. Um, but yeah, okay. they made their, I thought we they just made their got... lap three rounds. So. Yeah. Okay. No, the, the explosion right, was for Argo Narvis. Ah, uh, okay. Novak Racing also crossing into lap number three. Okay, three laps, two to go. Only two uh, races have made their way through into lap number two. And uh, my gosh, Kronzi, like, uh, I think right now there's so much pressure on this racer here. I mean, like, uh, don't explode with the camera right on you. I mean, or do, you know, like, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice view. <laughs> it's much more entertaining. If you're going to explode, then please do it when that happens. <laughs> All right, so we do have a message from uh, the uh, the track organizers here that any driver that has uh, completed more than 90% of the race distance will be classified in order of how much of the race they've completed. So even though people explode, uh, their uh, their distances through the track will be uh, will essentially go into calculating how many points they have gotten. So uh, even if you explode yes. at this point, um, you will still uh, get some points. Uh, like I do believe yeah, that not will as be many going as you may have gotten. 
True. Not, you're not as many as you may have gotten if you had exploded later on, obviously, even in the same position. Uh, but definitely, definitely still points awarded. So there, there is, you know, merit to still trying to go a little bit harder in the early, early stages. That's right. Capcom Alpha also completing their third lap uh, just then as well. So there, there's still a, a lot of our teammates that are around the uh, start, still around that seven, eight minute mark per lap, which is pretty respectable. Um, you know, we, we that, that's the fact that they haven't slowed down after no doubt the people from their team saying, hey, everyone's exploding <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is definitely going to be, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, they do have mastery here of uh, this chasm again. They don't seem to be as low as they necessarily could be. I feel like they're at uh, top strafe at the moment. But again, with uh, the amount of ground clutter there is here, I, I don't really yeah. blame them, you know? Like, there is just so much exactly. going on down here in this river. Yeah, exactly. You you do truly want to stay as high as you possibly can on this, uh, this section of the river. The rocks are surprisingly large and uh, surprisingly deadly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, you're trying to avoid them as much as possible. In fact, you'll often see them going a lot faster when we get to that straightaway. We have another DNF, this time from Novak Racing, who were oh, in third no. place position, ended lap number three. So they're going to be out of this one. But... They obviously got themselves up to a, uh, a fair more distance. So while they won't get their full points, you know, they they weren't able to complete 90% of the race, they will still get uh, a, a decent amount of diluted points, it sounds like. That's right. So that that almost looked sticky there for Ludox from uh, Blackhawks, uh, like, as they transition Ooh, sorry, into that, that, their... That one that we're watching right now is missing its back right engine. <laughs> right. And I believe that happened as yeah. they landed into the river. I mean, like, uh, they kind of bounced there was a bit of a blue glow and now they're a bit lighter yep that that would make sense but that sort of goes into what i was saying before the race where right. the dragonfly does have like a secret extra amount of health just in that it can lose parts of itself without blowing up a lot more than the other grab levs can and uh that essentially makes it a little bit more survivable it's a lot slower but it you know in, in a race like this speed is clearly not the issue that's right. It's got some of that good old Drake redundancy, you know, like uh, I think most Drakes <laughs> have way too much of whatever it is that they have, even though it's like, you know, gaffer taped together. All right, so we're, so we're still watching on the 20 minute mark now. Like I said, I think it is probably still going to take about 15 minutes. We've got uh, four teams left on the track right now. Star Prime Racing still on lap number two. So they've still got quite a way to go around, assuming that they do make it this way. But um, I, I mean, I am very impressed that these races have not died, you know? <laughs> I mean, considering how uh, well the other racers have uh, done so far up to this point, uh, yeah, I mean, like, but now, Kronzi, how many racers do you think are going to make it to uh, to the end, to the finish line? We have four left. We have lost a substantial amount of racers here. We started with <laughs> 16 of the fastest racers in the verse, and now we've boiled down yep. to four. We were with Blackhawks, Capcom Alpha, Delta Diodas, and Star Prime. Like, uh, do you think they're all going to make it? If last year is anything to go by, we may see... Uh, these exact four teams, maybe only one more of them will DNF before the end of the race. All right. Uh, it, it sort of just ended up being how it went last year where we were at the race, we saw a lot of DNFs very early on, and then those that were left were essentially able to stick around for quite a bit. So it's very possible we don't see another DNF until the very end of the race, but uh, I mean, I'm not going to actually predict that because then all, <laughs> everyone's going to collide into each other or something. <laughs> Uh, in that but, case, let me yeah, allow I, me I to do we'll so. In that case, Crod C, because there we go. <laughs> oh no, no, no that oh, doesn't no, count. No. That's a cameraman. That doesn't <laughs> count. <laughs> wow, that was cursed. Uh, allow me, and then he blew up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it, love it. So, not sure exactly who we're watching here. Uh, I, I would hazard a guess that this is uh, Delta Diodus. It sounds like. That's um, right, Delta so, Diodus yeah, in third they're, place they're in their here. Third lap. Yeah, they should just be about to approach the the turn off into the river. If I'm not mistaken, there all of those uh, trees that you can see on the left side, I believe, are up and uh, across the the cliff section. Uh, but we'll find out for certain in a second because it's a little bit dark at the moment, so it's a little bit harder to see. Luckily, 
we're doing this on Microtech and not Hurston. Microtech, especially in these green zones, a lot mm -hmm. easier to see in the night than it is when you've got storms going all over the place. So, Very true. The storm elements in Hurston are notoriously crazy. I mean, Microtech is spared, but it's moons, not so much. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Now, one of the advantages of the fact that we're doing two races today and we're doing a heat-based race right after this is all of our DNF uh, races right now can get ready really quickly for the next one. They can probably even get a couple of practice laps in, uh, which is very common in the heat-based race. Um, they, fr from experience, every time we've been getting ready for that sort of stuff, we would just run around the track a couple of times just to get back you know, used to it and get ourselves into it. So I, I imagine that's what our uh, competitors are doing literally as we speak elsewhere on microtech yeah it's quite the flex to be fair Cronsey, that like uh you know we have two races that we're doing today as opposed to one and it's just a, t a testament mm -hmm. really to um the logistics of uh of atmo esports and stuff you know like uh, we've gotten things down to a t now so much and also stability is with us uh just enough now that we're able to do these things and like you know plan ahead and be able to do uh you know like so much more with what we have with the verse and you know going forwards with three two three yep. hopefully we get even more that's a nice transition there into the chasm for uh, delta dietis racing there into the beginning of what is going to be a very rocky ride yeah. So there we go. Blackhawks also has reached lap number four now, the start of lap number four. Now, in order to get full points, assume that no one finishes the race today, although it does look like we are going to see some uh, some crossing the finish lines. The 90% rule, in order to get essentially full points for where you are positioned, will essentially be halfway through lap five. So Blackhawks right. getting very close now to to getting a sort of confirmed solid amount of points. Uh, and then, as we said late, uh, earlier, Points will be awarded based on how much of the original scheduled race distance you covered. So, uh, previous year... Oh, no. <laughs> I've got oh, to stop talking. No. We have <laughs> Renlos Malik from Star Prime Racing. And there's the body. <laughs> that, this is... Oh. We, why are we watch This is shameful. Oh, the you humanity. You watch a body. This is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if... if, if In previous years, we've had the case where if uh, you had a DNF that was before 90%, uh, you were just awarded zero points. So that is, that is a little different this year. So you still will get points based on your positioning, just less than if you cross the finish line, which still sort of makes sense. Right. And then there were three, Kronzi. We're now down to Blackhawks, <laughs> Catcom were. Alpha, and Delta Dietis Racing. Yeah, Catcom just now getting into their for the 23-minute mark. All right. So far, so good. Again, I mean, like, uh, Blackhawk has been our consistently fastest uh, racer with a 6 minute and 46 fast uh, second uh, lap time. Uh, with Circa Worm yes. from Catcom Alpha in second place there has a lap time of 7 minutes and 25 seconds, 0.27. So, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a gap there. That being said, I'm not too sure if uh, Ludox has... Le uh, you know, let up a bit on the throttle or if they're still going as fast as possible. But so far, so good for them. I mean, I feel like with a lap time like that, you know, a 6.46, and it, for reference, for comparison, our other two competitors, Capcom Alpha, uh, their fastest time is a 7.25. Delta Dietis, their fastest time is an 8.36. I, I, I feel like if you're getting a 6.46 and they've hit each lap, like they've been in first place for a very long time now. They were even at the start of the pack right at the beginning, right? I, I imagine right. they haven't been letting up very much at all now it's a team that we haven't been watching very much because they don't have their lights on uh so it would be very boring for us to be watching uh <laughs> essentially nothing <laughs> just just trying to sort of guess where the dust clouds are in the night uh but they're absolutely smashing it that's right they uh yeah they're proving exactly uh what you can do with this bike even in the middle of the night here uh, although I do believe they they are still missing a strut, and with one lap to go, I mean, mm -hmm. it's only going to be one more risky lake transition, and that's going to be the end of their race here. But uh, so far, uh, so good. I believe this is still Delta Dietis Racing, third place, uh, being chased here by cameraman Officer Ron Dog as they make their way through the last mm -hmm. few moments here of the River Run Cronsey. Yeah, and this turn here, you will recognize if you've been doing the Gravelev Racing on 
uh, arena command of this is right like the, while we use this track this part is 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 actually part of the arena commander track and it's what i call extremely annoying there's a turn coming up right here <laughs> that i always forget to turn left really hard and see that little opening in the trees i always uh -huh. end up yeeting myself off into that forever uh it is a pain <laughs> and uh and i can't believe that duncan would do that to me and it is entirely his fault all right <laughs> and there we go <laughs> Okay, so here we are with awesome. the race here we go. So leader. So we do have and... image of Ludox, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, doing good so far. For some reason, racing without any lights. I wonder why, maybe perhaps using the lights slows them down. <laughs> They're faster in the dark or something, don't see. <laughs> Well, it's it's a little interesting. There's a lot of times, especially when there aren't storms, right? Where uh, okay. lights can kind of be a hindrance sometimes. They can just be a little bit awkward on your eyes. As well as, you know, I imagine they've got their, their like personal lighting settings and whatnot for this that they've figured out. Mm -hmm. It is interesting to note, though, that Ludox already essentially halfway through the river. Um, and so this is going to be another very quick lap for Blackhawks, assuming they're able to cross the finish line again. So, uh, yeah, quite a bit of difference between our three teams here that at the moment appear to be the teams that are going to finish up. And last year was the same. We had three teams finish up and that was it. So... They, they definitely know something we don't. I did want to mention as well, we were talking a little bit about how, you know, the uh, Delta Diodus, they had the Dragonfly that was missing uh, the, I think it was the back right strut. Mm -hmm. uh, shields, si since last year, shields got removed from most Gravelev bikes, uh, which right. uh, has made for interesting interactions because the Gravelevs themselves became more useful. They, they, they seemed to over the last year react to desync a little bit less so you would survive a little bit more with them uh but now they essentially just have less hp as well <laughs> without the shields so they still tend to explode at kind of the same rate uh which has been uh i don't know it's been an interesting thing to try to navigate to figure out the best way to operate these vehicles yeah it's an interesting change i do believe the x1 force is one of the only gravel air vehicles now that does still have a uh, a shield on it and uh, with gold standard you can actually like you know press a button and plop it out and look at it and stuff and i suppose remove it to make it like along the lines of these other bikes if you wanted to be uh, a sport about it but uh yeah i guess they've done that for um how would you say for balancing for fps and such so the people on bikes aren't mm -hmm. too op if they're going to try and mow down an ent entire platoon of players yes now, this is also one of the really interesting tracks. I mean, we talked about a little bit about how essentially this track is in Arena Commander. It's a much uh, smaller version of the track, um, right. but pretty much from halfway through the river uh, and onwards, the track is almost uh, essentially identical. It's the same river. It's just got some terrain pieces and whatnot out. Now, it's had its sh fair share of issues on Arena Commander, so it hasn't been everyone's favorite to, uh, to race around. But this is probably one of the first times where we've had a track in the System 7 that you can practice for in Arena Commander if you wanted to. <laughs> and you can use that to your advantage. We, normally, you know, I'm so used to uh, our, our competitors, like they, they put in the hard work and they put in the hours of, you know, going to each of those locations, spending hours upon hours there, dying, you know, when they're, when they're trying to improve their times. And then it taking an hour and a half to an hour to get back to that location reset up restart all this other stuff it's been really awesome to be able to see people go into ac and actually do these sorts of things yeah i mean before it's been an endurance in uh more ways than one it's really cool that uh, now we have this ability to be able to go and practice uh properly being able to track everything so you have the official leaderboards uh in tow as well uh, it's it's really made for making racing a lot more accessible for the player base as well. So, you know, fingers crossed we see yeah. more of this, you know, like uh, CIG will add more of these tracks uh, to Arena Commander as well. They're able to render entire planets in AC, because why not? Um, so, like, uh, you know, like, as they have been cooperating with Animal Esports, with SCR to add more of those, their tracks into the game, uh, it'd be really cool to see to yep. see that because you know then we'll we'll see this level of competition boiled down even more as players get even more time to practice these races, Croncy. Yeah, definitely. So Blackhawks have reached lap number five. 
So it's only going to be about seven-ish, eight minutes, hopefully, until we see our very first team cross the finish line. Capcom Alpha and a Delta died is still a fair way back. Uh, once again, because we were watching Blackhawks and they had their lights off, I imagine this is not Blackhawks. I think this would be Delta Diodus again, because we're at Officer Rondog. Just now entering the river on their fourth lap. So, um, yeah, they've been solid. They've just been a lot slower. That's right. Again, slow and steady, because at the end of the day, provided they make their way 90% of the way through this track, they will be coming home with the points that you'll get for being in third place. You know, And that's going to be a very, very... Uh, I mean, like, every point matters in the System 7. You know, like, uh, it is it is a matter of yep. consistency. You know, like, uh, if you can place high uh, consistently, you're going to get more points. You're going to, you know, make sure you end up in the podium. You know, like, uh, so... Be as slow as you want, you know, get those points. There isn't much competition anymore, you know, like it's just you, yourself, and the rocks. Yeah. I also imagine, we, we, you know, we were talking again about how uh, most of the teams this year are full teams of four or, or, or teams right. of three. There, there's a lot more, uh, uh, I, I guess, support crew in your teams this year than there has been in previous years. Um, another advantage of that is, all right, cool, let's jump into, let's try race number one. Oh no, race number one, turns out, is extremely volatile, right? And this has happened before, and mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's totally reasonable. Well, what that means is you just, you, you know, like, look, I'm here for points. I'm just not going to, we're, we're just not going to practice race number one. We're going to focus on race number two for the heats or race number three and so on. Um, and you're going to see that over the course of the entire system seven and it's going to change depending on the team it's going to change depending on uh the race's favorite vehicles it's going to change based on the region that you're in all that sort of stuff true um the, 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 the like real hope i think for for the system seven in in some time is that we can have at least i'm hoping is that we can have like region specific system sevens right like oh here we go here's my oceanic system seven where everyone's got you know less than 100 ping and they're all in the same region that's 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 the goal one day so if you are out there and you that's the thing that you would also want to do then you just got to sign up for next year maybe one year we can make it happen if we, we get enough signups yeah i mean like uh, it's definitely possible right and uh, that's going to be a very interesting thing in and of itself once we do get server meshing because the whole idea of choosing your region is going to be I, I imagine it'll exist, but like it's going to be a lot more nebulous, right? Like uh, I, we don't really know how the uh, like the shard configurations are going to work. I mean, like uh, because if you want yep. like a seamless transition from let's say like Hurston to Arcorp, and Hurston has its own server and Arcorp has its own server, and we're using static server meshing, then like uh, mm -hmm. within that uh, within that shard, I mean, like is is Hurston going to be EU? Is R Corp going to be Oceania? Like, how is it going to work for a shard? I wonder. But, uh, but yeah, that's I, I, yeah. No, I don't. I think I, I, I'm not sure where you're getting that idea of where it might be. Um, mm -hmm. The the way that it, it at least has been presented, and because once again we've been able to test it recently. Did you see that 800 right. player server? That was I that was did. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way that it essentially works is is you will you will always be. At the very least, you will always be region locked, and the different right. shards will still be within that region. Within so that still have, region, if if you go into US and you go to R Corp and uh, person, that they're, they're both still going to be US. Okay, um, all right, that's okay. What it'll be like for the foreseeable future? I think we all want right. that one day of literally everyone playing the game on the one server. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. until we solve like faster than light communications, <laughs> I don't think that's going to be uh, feasible. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah, they, they had spoken about single shard and maybe perhaps uh, the idea of single shard uh, has kind of changed uh, in favor of multiple shards and, uh, you know, all that. But I don't know, maybe with dynamic server meshing, like uh, where things aren't set in stone, where s servers are spooled up as is necessary, we might see some of that. But uh, for the meantime, with static, it makes sense to have each uh, each shard, uh, you know, be a constellation of like uh, of the same region. So yeah, I feel mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So there we go. So this will be Delta Diodus crossing the finish line to enter their lap number five as well. 
if we can, I know we don't have any lights, but if we can get a shot of Blackhawks just to see where they are at the moment, that would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, very far into the river right now, as you can tell, uh, using our very fancy uh, <laughs> ping technique in order to, uh, <laughs> to see the track here. Uh, but yeah, Ludox, that means they have officially crossed the 90% mark. Uh, obviously, they still want to finish so that they can confirm first place, but they will be getting full points uh, con confirmed already there. So... Um, yeah, I think we're going to see three teams cross the line today. Yeah, I mean, like, we do have three in lap three, so it makes sense. I mean, they've gotten this far with their endurance, so, um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't necessarily want to, uh, to jinx things, but I think, however, Cronzy, that's the issue. <laughs> Whenever we say we don't want to jinx things, that's when things actually do get jinxed. Uh, so, <laughs> moving yep. swiftly on, uh, people might be wondering why it is that, uh, for the, uh, the, the ship that's chasing first place, they're using the uh, the scan ping as opposed to using the ship's own headlights. That's so that the uh, the cameras do not interfere with the perspective of the racer. Everything is down to the racer yes. and how the racer wants the race to work. And so there's no outside interference. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Yeah. It's so far. Yeah, as much uh, as we so can, we want here. to avoid that. Yeah. Right. So yeah, Blackhawks in first, Capcom in second, Delta Dietus in third. And with that, it means we definitely know where everyone else is positioned. So once again, I did mention before, and I've uh, been posting in the Twitch chat, essentially, if you complete 90% of the race or more, uh, that's essentially where your position will be. You will still get points based on how far you competed. However, if you did less than 75% of the race, uh, those points will be diminished. So we'll get confirmation of where all of those points end up landing, uh, hopefully before the end of uh, the the second race this, uh, of our heats that we'll be doing right after this. Uh, but um, yeah, a bit of a shame. This track is extremely hard. And like I said, it's extremely luck-based, but clearly we've had a couple of teams get their get their luck in order for this one and uh smash it <laughs> get your luck i'm in still order. surprised just how fast <laughs> get your luck in order come on uh i'm still <laughs> amazed how fast blackhawks have been able to finish their their laps though with all of that in mind it, it nice. is one of those situations and it will happen in some races where you're just like look i know that i'm probably going to explode on a flip uh, like flip of a coin so i'm just gonna go really fast anyway and hope that i can get you know eight <laughs> coin flips right let's see I mean, so far, it's been working in their favor here. You can see this is Ludox here. That's their point of view. The, that's the finish line. You can see those two ships, yep. the two uh, Carricks there, which denote the uh, the finish line there as Ludox approaches. Uh, but uh, there's no fanfare here, as, of course, there is no competition. Ludox owning the race here, coming in first place. With a total race time well, of 37 Adana minutes and 45 Horse. seconds. Our first finish off for our first race, and not to mention one of our team of three, uh, one of our three teams that auto qualified from last year, and another a lovely, a lovely post game explosion, <laughs> which I love to see. <laughs> Speaking of, I did see at the finish line, one of those Carricks was just like on fire at the bottom, which I imagine <laughs> means one of those teams that got into lap number two smashed into the Carrick as they were there you go you can see it oh, right no. there i think they must have smashed into it as they came around Does uh Capcom alpha DNF? right Capcom alpha just had an incident on lap number five circo worm is dead now i don't we don't know where delta dietus are at the moment but delta dietus may be able to get past where Catcom Alpha were, and as long as they do, that will lock them in for second place. They just have to... They're getting into the river, that's more than 90% of it completed, so they've guaranteed locked in one of these positions, but I do want to know where Catcom Alpha exploded. This this could be a big deal, because, I mean, I mean, maybe you just take it as slow as you can, guarantee <laughs> the finish line, but well, ooh, this is a little I spicy. Mean so we heard, um, uh, at least uh, you and I heard a second ago from production that th they said death at the finish line. I wonder if that fiery like a uh, pit right by the Carrick was uh, like a circle worm who hit the Carrick as opposed to going past it. Uh, it is possible. Like I said, Delta Didus was behind uh, circle worm by a fair amount. Right. Right. They they were they they're our slowest team that was still competing with a best time of 8.36, right? So 
a full minute, more than a full minute slower than uh, than Capcom Alpha's best time. So it is very That's possible right. that that is what happened. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have Either to way. get confirmation once we once we finish up. Apparently, about okay. two hundred meters from the Carrick was the explosion from Capcom Alpha. So, <laughs> if that uh... costs them second place, that is <laughs> super rough. <laughs> We will see very shortly because so far so good. They can go as slow as they want here because surely slowly and steadily has been doing good for them so far here, Gronzi. It's definitely been doing something for Delta Dietus for sure. Um, yeah, one of the only one of the only other teams that we saw with a really slow approach was Argo Navis, who finished their first lap after nine minutes and nine seconds. Uh, unfortunately, they then exploded. Uh, in their second lap, uh, I think also in the uh, the flatter section, not the river, um, which I, I expected most of the uh, collisions and explosions would be in the river or the entrance to the river. I'm not sure that's exactly what happened as we've been watching, uh, um, you know, a lot of these uh, top competitors for the most part of this race. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's certainly possible. Anyone who's right. taken a Graveler vehicle out in Star Citizen knows just how fragile these uh, vehicles can be. We have confirmation from Circle Worm in chat that uh, they got foiled by the very last tree of the entire course there. <laughs> Rigged. 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 CIG spawned a tree in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> this also, this may be the, the least amount of competitors we've had cross the finish line in a race in System 7 history. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to double check that. We've had, we, we tend to at least have like one race a year where we have like maybe three or four teams cross the finish line. Right. Um, in fact, this race last year was that. We had three people uh, cross the finish line last year. Um, With only two left, I think it yeah. might be actually. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it is the case. So another one for the record books, regardless. Tick that one off. And uh, Ooh, hopefully, I am really hoping that this track gets a little bit more interesting as we get into uh, the new patches. Oh, for sure. At the very least, I mean, like, it'd be really interesting to see if the new water shader uh, is affected uh, in the river, you know, like uh, by vehicles mm -hmm. like this flying past. Because at the end of the day, you know, even if it's the exact same course and the vehicles move the exact same way, it's going to look so much more cinematic. Yeah, for sure. So Delta Dietus approaching the lake now, not too much further to go. Essentially, like one more major obstacle that we've been talking about. We saw a couple of explosions there before. The transition from river to lake can be a little bit finicky here. Ooh, right. Could be a, uh, this is your favorite yeah. part of the track as well, uh, chicaning it's through uh, uh, these <laughs> trees. <laughs> it's just... it's. It's not because it's a bad turn. It's honestly because mm -hmm. I'm a bad racer. I just hate coming around that corner because it's so deceptive and makes me think that I can take it a lot wider than I actually can. And I inevitably just end up slamming into some uh, to some trees. If you You're guys want to check out this great. track, a reminder that you can essentially right now on Arena Commander. Um, I keep forgetting what it is called on Arena Commander, but it, it should be River River Run. I think it's River Run. River Run or something, uh, yeah. It is essentially this track, but they've got different uh, terrain. They've got uh, the, like a crashed satellite there as well and some extra stuff. It's got some frame rate issues, but I've been told personally by Duncan that, that uh, is, a bunch of fixes coming for that in 323. Um, nice. I'm very excited for that because personally, it's one We're of the We're on the home straight nice jump to it. It's very cool. I do wonder if they're going to make it. They've dodged all the trees. I think that is second place in the bag. They have, all they yep. have to do now is fly through. And there it is. Delta Dietus Racing securing second place for our first race of the System 7. Congratulations, racers. A very explosive start to the System 7. <laughs> um, couldn't help myself just there. Uh, but well, well, there, well yeah. done. No, thank you. I'm actually a master of puns, is what they call me. Uh, <laughs> well, well done, Blackhawks and Delta Dietus for finishing that one up. Catcom Alpha will be uh, third place. They completed more than 90% of the track, so they're going to be full points for third place. We will confirm all of the other points. Leaderboard apparently uh, has already been updated. So 
that was quick. Here we go. Here are our points. So like we said, there are those diminished points for our uh, fourth through seventh or fourth through eighth place there um, as they finished less than 75% of the race. But still, uh, in my opinion, a much better rules uh, change than we had uh, in previous years. So well done to our competitors. Blackhawks with 25 points. Delta Dietus 18. Catcom Alpha with 12. Star Prime 4. Novak 3. Amarox Fang 2. Argo Novice with 2. And the rest of our teams with one point a piece to start off with. That's the first That's race right. already done. That was really quick. Yeah, and uh, what an advantage now Blackhawks have going into this next race, because this is not the end of our day here, Kronsi. All our 16 no, races have one more race to do and one more opportunity in order to try and get some points on the board. Yeah, so we're going to be moving very soon over to... Uh, I'm trying to remember that we've got so many fancy names for all of the race tracks again this year. <laughs> it's called the Cold <laughs> Snap Speedway. Cold Snap, thank you. It's like every year someone has to come up with like a fancier, funnier, like microtech, <laughs> cold themed uh, map track name. So we will be heading over to Cold Snap very, very soon to start our heat based races where we're going to be using the Nox. So height is going to be a lot less of an issue with this one as we're essentially going to be on the frozen uh, ton or frozen lake for the majority of the race. But that means that uh, your obstacles on your sides, all of that terrain that you've got to avoid becomes much more of an issue. So I feel like we're going to see a lot faster races, but a lot of the collisions are going to come from tight turns and whatnot. That's right, um, especially when it comes down to practice and stuff. Even though we're going to have four racers per heat, that still means that you have three other Gravlev bikes to watch out for as obstacles as well, though, Kronzi. Yep. Oh, some lovely shots there of, I imagine, Tressler. That's right. I, I imagine that is Tressler. It'd be weird if it was somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, are so, those yeah, ships we're gonna or be... are those asteroids? Who knows? Floating about Maybe around we'll just it. Have to ram one to find out. Uh, I, I think those are actually the turrets, if I'm not mistaken. Oh the, right, the yes. Turrets that are uh, outside the station. Um, well, with that, we're going to go on a little break, guys, while we wait for uh, our competitors to get ready for the next race. But it should be very quick, as um, if you did watch that race that we had just then, our competitors have had ample time to uh, to get themselves ready. Uh, it is almost time for race number two. System 7, 2954, presented by Equinox. We'll see you guys soon.